Okay, hello and welcome to a new C++ tutorial. In this video we are going to have a look at coding a dynamically allocated array. This tutorial assumes that you do not want to use any STL containers. Now before we get started coding, I'm going to bring up my final application for this tutorial and we have some instructions. We have press enter to print game objects and then we have a prompt saying enter name for game object and this is where we can add game objects to our array so I'm going to call my first object door alright we have one element in our array called door let's add another object let's call it shotgun ammo alright and when I did that a new array was created that can hold one more object and now we have two objects in our array so the theory that we're going to code is that we shall have an array and to add an additional element to the array we're going to delete the old one and create a new one. Before we delete the old array or the memory that took up the old array we need to copy the game objects into our new allocated memory and go from there. So let's add a few more items, let's go with gravity gun and light and one more, let's go for window. Alright, if I press enter without inputting any uh, data, all of our game objects in the array will be printed in a convenient list. In this case we have five game objects with a corresponding name. And in the next video we may have a look at creating a menu system that utilizes our dynamically allocated array. So to get started I have upgraded to Visual Studio Express 2012 for Windows Desktop. You can download this for free from the Microsoft website providing you meet the minimum system requirements. To download this IDE you need to have Windows 7 with Service Pack 1 installed or Windows 8. So if you don't have any of those operating systems I recommend to stick to Visual Studio Express 2010. It doesn't matter which IDE you use in this tutorial. So let's create a new project. File new project. It's going to be a console application and let's call it Dynamic Array Demo. Alright, let's click Next and Empty Project and Finish. Now I'm immediately going to add a CPP file to my project and let's call it main. Alright, we can start by including all the header files we need in this example. I'm simply going to include the input output stream header file and the string header file. Now below this I'm going to say using std colon colon which is the scope resolution operator to go within the std namespace and I want to import the C out object and let's copy and paste this line to speed things up I'm going to use the C in object in addition to the get line function and lastly the string class all right Let's just save our file to double check we haven't got any errors and these are all the objects and functions I'm going to use from the STD namespace. This will prevent us from having to import the entire namespace altogether and clog up our global namespace. Now below that we can define our structure of type game objects and store a name. Let's type struct call it game object, block it out with an open and close and curly brace, a semicolon at the end. And within this data structure I'm going to have one field of type string called name. At this moment in time our application is going to store game objects which can only have a name at this moment in time. Okay. Now let's go ahead and block out the main function by typing int main and within the open and close and curly braces let's type return 0 and cin.get call upon that method the cin.get method will keep the console window open 
until we press the enter key on our keyboard. Now within the main function let's firstly create an empty array or a pointer to a game object array and establish a counter variable which can keep track of how many elements are in our array. So uh, to create the array pointer we need to start by declaring the type the array will hold which is game objects put in an asterisk to denote that it is a pointer and I'm going to call this array objects. Let's initialize it to null as there are no elements in the array at this moment in time. Now to create our counter variable I'm going to say unsigned if I can spell unsigned int and call it count initialize it to zero as again we have zero elements in the array at the moment. Now below this we can just input an instruction to the user by calling upon C out and say press enter to print game objects. Let's leave a couple of lines and end off our statement. Now we want to add as many game objects as we need throughout the application. Therefore I'm going to set up a while loop that will keep looping until we press the enter key without entering a string. This will enable us to enter as many game objects into the array as we want. So let's type while and pass in true. Block out the while loop and immediately we can prompt the user to specify a name for a game object. Let's say C out and say enter name for game object. Okay, immediately below this we can instantiate a new game object data structure by saying game object and let's call it simply game object with lowercase g. And now we can extract what we have inputted into the console and store it in the game object name field. To do that, I'm going to pull a call upon the get line function passing C in as the stream we're going to use to extract the data we enter into the console. And after that we need to specify a variable to store the data, which is going to be gameobject.name. Alright, very nice. At this point we have entered a name for the game object or an empty string to print out all of our objects. So uh, let's firstly check if we have entered an empty string. I'm going to say if game object is equal to two double quotes, which is an empty string, we're going to break out of the while loop. In other words, oh, excuse me, we need to put game object dot name. So everything will work. If we've inputted an empty string into the game object's name field, we shall end the while loop and continue to print out all the elements in the array. Now after that we can check if we have indeed entered a name and if the array has zero objects we need to allocate new memory to store one element and increase our count. So let's say if objects which is our array is equal to null we're checking if there are no elements in the array we can say objects is equal to new game object which is the type of the array and within open and closing square brackets pass in a one we want to store one element in the array as we want to add one new game object all right below that we can say objects and in open and closing square brackets pass in zero which we are referencing the first element in the array and simply initialize it to our game object. All right, at this point we have added one element in the array and all we need to do is increment our count variable to symbolize just that. I'm gonna say count plus plus. All right, and that's all we need to do to add one element in the array if our array starts off as null. Now let's type else and block out the else statement. 
we need to create some code to add an additional element into the array if we have more than zero game objects. So to do that, we're going to create a temporary game object pointer to point to our existing array. So let's type game object, make it a pointer by specifying an asterisk, and let's call this temp. I'm going to initialize it to objects. So at this moment in our application, the temporary pointer is pointing to our array. Now, we want to add one more game object to the array, so we need to allocate new memory for an entirely new array that holds one more game object. And to do that, I'm going to say objects equals new, an array of type game object, and pass in count plus one inside the amount of elements we want to create. Now, this allocates memory to store all of our existing game objects, plus one more which we need. Now, before we go ahead and add the new game object, we need to copy our previous objects from the temp array into the new memory we have allocated for the objects array. To do that, I'm going to type 4 unsigned int equals 0. If i is less than our count, we're going to increment i. All right, and within here we can simply say objects and pass in i is equal to temp and pass in i as well. This will simply copy our objects into the new memory for the array. All right, and if I, yeah, we need to declare a variable name for our counter, excuse me. All right, we've copied all of our objects over into the new memory. Let's now add the new game objects to the end of our array. So to do that, we can say objects and pass in count is equal to game object. And let's again increment our count. And lastly, we do not need our temporary array anymore as we've copied the old objects into the new array. So to delete an array from memory, we can call upon the delete keyword, specify an open and closing square brackets to symbolize we are deleting an array, and say temp, the name of the array we want to delete from memory. And that is all our logic complete. We have simply uh, specified some logic to create a dynamically allocated array that can store any amount of game objects that we choose. Now after that we can leave our while loop and print out all of the objects that we have made. So I'm going to see out a new line just to make our application look nice and loop through our array and print out all of our game objects. So let's say for just going to put auto to prevent me from typing, call it i equals zero. We're going to say if i is less than our count, plus plus i, and within here we can simply print out the names of our game objects. So I'm going to say c out, specify an open square bracket, and then print out our counter variable in the for loop. Close off our square brackets and put a hyphen and then we can print out our objects, pass in i and say dot name. And lastly, a new line to make our application look nice. Okay, we've now printed out all of our names. Let's lastly delete the memory of our objects array to prevent memory leaks in the application. So we can delete it after we have printed out all of our game objects names. I'm going to say if objects is not equal to null, we can delete our objects array. We're using the same syntax as we did to delete our temporary array above. Now, and that is the application complete. Let's go to build and build solution. Hopefully we don't have any errors and we've succeeded. Very nice. Let's now go to debug and start debugging. 
All right, we have press enter to print game objects. Enter the name for game object. Now I'm gonna go for, let's say, the door again. Let's go for gravity gun and shotgun ammo and uh, desert eagle, buggy, and just enter as many game objects as you wish. Now, I've got one, two, three, four, five objects, and if I press enter without inputting a string, we print off all of our objects. Very nice. And that will conclude this tutorial. If I press enter, we exit the application, and that will conclude the logic for constructing a dynamically allocated array. In the next video, we may have a look at implementing a menu system to populate our array and go from there. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.